Hey, this is Brett the Hitman Heart. Best there is, best there was, and the best there ever will be. And you're listening to the Smack Raw Podcast. Hey folks, welcome to the Smack Draw Podcast, your one-stop shop for all your WWE and AEW recaps, reviews, pay-per-view predictions. Like always, it's Kyle here, joined tonight by the old crew, Mr. Rob and Benji. Got both you guys on the stream. What's going on, fellas? Same old, you know what? Watching yeah, wrestling, I'm, doing I'm, podcasts. I'm out here living my best life, I ain't gonna lie, man. I've had a hell of a week. I was ex- I'm excited for this raw. I'm I'm hyped, man. I'm I'm hyped to be have this old crew back, you know. Show the, show these new youngins how it's done, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, you guys. We haven't had a stream where it was just us three. Uh probably Benji since shortly your first visit on the show. It's been several months since it's been us three. Um a lot and of now change. we've come full circle, baby. Man, full and we're back. circle. And we're back, folks. Listen, if you haven't been following us for the last frequent months, uh, we are a wrestling podcast. You can find us on Stitcher, Podbean, um, Google Play Music, iTunes, Spotify, all those fun places. We're also on YouTube. Um, You can always like and subscribe. Help us get to that 100 subscriber mark to get us that custom URL. And, of course, we're always active on Twitter. Uh, Rob and Benji a little bit more than myself, although I am trying to keep up with you two, but, damn, it's exhausting. Uh, You can follow us at the SmackDraw Pod, myself at the Kai Tai Show, and I'll let you two guys to let them know all the places you can find them or find you. Go ahead, Rob. Two words, can't see me. On Twitter, and somebody just called Shorty G, Chad Gable, on Twitter, so I'm calling them out. Not Chad Gable. <laughs> like His I said, you guys Shorty are – Rob never puts Twitter down. I'm telling you, he's still on it Twitter. right now. I have two other accounts as well. <laughs> I am as active on them. Oh, well, I, I, you know, I, I, let me be a little gentleman. I am also active on the Twitter community, and you can definitely find me at – Calavera Comedy on Twitter, and you can find me on Instagram, Calavera Comedy, and on anywhere, any social media site that you could possibly think of. And don't you have your own spin off uh, show, Benji, that you're starting? I got my own show, yo. Yeah. Calavera Black, check it out. Drop an episode tomorrow, yo. I'm just doing everything. I got. I just did four other podcasts before. This is number five. Oh I've been on a roll today. God. Tell you, I've been living my best life. Hell yeah, man. Glad to hear. Just make sure, uh, send me a link, and I'll put it in the description. Uh, check out, you say Calavera Block? Uh, sir, just kick it on the block, you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, man. We'll go ahead and include that link in the description so you I'm can hit up. Benji from the block. Jesus Christ. We couldn't get, oh, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even get through the intro. Oh my God. Uh, that, that's like the fourth time I've heard that today. Really? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Rob, it's the low hanging fruit you go for. Oh man! <laughs> but you know, I'm 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 comfortable with people going for my low hanging fruits. That's good. But we're getting through this Christ, intro, and on. y'all should definitely catch us on any, any stra- <laughs> uh, streaming service, all that stuff. Smack Raw Pod, hit up hit up the YouTube, yo. We're so close to 100 subscribers, and finally get that magical custom url you don't have to hear it every damn intro I know. it'll be amazing it'll be done uh benji's agreed to do a uh podcast with us in his full uh, I, I face never paint agreed get to up. That. Uh, you have to go back and check that because I, I don't pull know the I sound bite. i have all the shows archived my friend <laughs> i will find that sound bite Oh man, because you so got mad because we up, called it. I called make sure it. y'all hit up the YouTube and make sure you unsubscribe right now. <laughs> unsubscribe. <laughs> no, if you're over on YouTube, you can check out. I mean, it's nothing flashy, but we got a new intro. You probably could tell by the music. Testing out a couple of new things on the show. But let's go ahead and get into the show that we're covering. Uh, tonight's episode of Monday Night Raw, hailing from the uh, OK the City. <laughs> much majestical <laughs> wasteland that is Cleveland. Listen, hold on. Before we segregate viewers, okay? Because listen, we have viewers in Ohio. <laughs> if you guys, <laughs> sorry guys, I'm sorry. Oh boy, Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland. They're healing from Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> oh, As a Chicago guy, I, I can't, I can't rock with Cleveland. I'm sorry. Oh man, uh, is there I'm is there a rivalry Detroit, between? So I mean, um... I'm the same. Yeah, this rivalry. Rob gets it. 
Mm-hmm. Oh man, I don't know. Kind of the whole Midwest hates Ohio. Really? It's just kind of we're, we're supposed to. It's a thing. Is it kind of like is is it kind of like the Northeast, like New Jersey, where they just? I guess if you're going to the north, north, it's it's basically the the Carolinas of the Midwest. Oh wow! Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> I'm not even from here, and I get offended by that. <laughs> Oh, man. You know what? You know who else is from the Carolinas, though? Is Mr. Ric Flair, and that's who kicked off this episode of Monday Night Raw. Fresh um, fresh off playing beer pong with one Post Malone. Did y'all see that clip? I did not, but Ric Flair is, is that, out He's out there, man. Bad, yeah. Does that explain why he's drunk? Uh, dude, he's got to be drunk, word he man. Was he's got to be drunk when he's doing these. I'm telling you. You know, uh, hold on. The Smack Drop Pod legal team is telling me that he's allegedly drunk. Thank you. Allegedly, folks. Oh, man. Ric Flair's out there running the crowd down, as he should, claiming to sleep with fans' mothers. Um, And he does come out. He's here to reveal, obviously, his final pick to their little Survivor Series-style match that's taking place at Crown Drool on the 31st of October. Um, Flair's final pick... For his team is the one and only Drew McIntyre. Dude, why is Drew not a champ yet? How long has he been on Raw and he still has not a champ? Like, what is holding this fella back, man? Uh, the fact that Drew McIntyre? He doesn't really do it for me, personally. So, I mean, that's oh, my answer. What? Oh, my <laughs> God, dude. Drew has got know, everything, bro. That's just me. That's just me. The Smack Raw legal team is telling me to throw it out there that it's simply an opinion, and you guys are allowed to have your own. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle and Benji here, as well as listeners, even the ones from Ohio. Oh, my gosh. Man. <laughs> so, yeah, he rounds out the team. Hogan's team comprised of uh, the new team leader, Roman Reigns, uh, Rusev, Shorty G., uh, Ricochet mm-hmm. and Ali. Flair's team comprised of Randy Orton, Shinsuke Nakamura, King Corbin, Bobby Lashley, and Drew McIntyre. A lot of little uh, story roles intertwined here in those two teams as well. Most notably, of course, the um, Bobby Lashley and Rusev feud, and then, of course, King Corbin and the Shorty G, although that one feels like it should be done by now. Um, but you know they'll oh, play it. Oh, it was just born. You can't be done on something that's just born. He finally on... became Shorty G. You can't just say, like, okay, move on. Are they on opposite shows, or do, do they it. both get drafted to SmackDown? Mm, I don't know. I think they're both on it. SmackDown, actually. Um, okay, then, yeah, keep it going. Let's yeah. roll. Uh, Drew McIntyre promises to give a preview to Crown Jewel as he takes on uh, Team Hogan's Ricochet. And then, boy, these guys, what could have been easily like a snore squash match, ended up being... Arguably the match of the night, the kickoff match um, between uh, Drew McIntyre and Ricochet. And I forgot to turn my ringer down. One second. You know, and it, they did have a great match. And it's it's very fitting that they're setting up for Crown Jewel and there were zero women matches in this whole entire show. Oh, God. I didn't even realize. Jesus, man. Very Dude, fitting. Wide open. That was like a wide open shot right there. Swoosh. You're right. You're right. Actually, that was super fitting, man. Where were the women on this show? No, I think Becky Lynch, they were still in Australia, I think. But, I mean, you still have more. I don't know, man. The only woman that appeared on this show was Lana. That was it. Oh, wow. Of all, of, Out of your entire female roster. Yeah, Lana. And Zelina Vega. And she, Vega. So it's two, two. Yeah, and, but they're not even wrestling. Yeah, Vega's not really. It. Yeah, she's not a competitor. Although, I imagine she could be. She has oh, she that. definitely, she, she definitely could, but they have her as a as a manager role. But point being, you have all these women, as, you know, new champions, new shows, new storylines, everything, and nothing. And around this time last year, we were setting up for the the Evolution pay per view. Was that last year or was that the year before? That was last 2018. That was a good ass pay per view too, man. It yeah, bums me that out year, that not doing Last one. time this year, we were preparing for that, and here next come this year, we're preparing for. The pay-per-view that shall not be named, you know? <laughs> Although we'll hear it all throughout the night. Um, and it doesn't help that they, at first, it was that they, because uh, they were supposed to do a, a third May Young Classic, and then it got canceled, but then we learned it's actually been 
um, pushed back to 2020. We are getting a third May Young Classic, but unfortunately, we're not going to get it till next year. And yeah, no, women need some shine, man. Anytime you have this crown jewel event going on, you re- WWE really needs their PR team to do put some shine on their female competitors because it it is super awkward to anyone actually paying attention to the ongoings. But politics aside, man, back to the match. Uh, once again, this match could have been a stinker, but both guys really shined in the right way. Drew looked like a powerhouse throwing uh, Ricochet all over that ring. Um, Ricochet, of course, having his comeback spots, his high-flying spots, which are always fun to see. And then Flair, for some reason, just cutting promos during rest holds. Like, I mean, I, granted... If you're going to do a rest hold, that's how you should have it done. You should have Ric Flair cutting a promo during the rest hold, man. Oh, but yeah, that just, that, that kind of, that kind of, um, I got to chuckle out of that. I didn't like it. No? I didn't like it at all. Man. No, I, I don't care for Ric Flair, man. I really don't. I've I never always have. told you, bro. You got to watch the worse. 30 for 30, man. You got to watch that 30 I mean, for 30. That's how well I'm good, but still. You'll I become mean, a oh, fan. Come on. You're out there sounding drunk. Talking about something that nobody really cares about. And, uh, I just it didn't do it for me. What about it's you, cringe. Mr. Benji? What about you? How, how's Flair? What 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 tick, what boxes are is Flair ticking for you? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Rob. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> do you, <laughs> you know I'm all for riding Space Mountain, baby. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, Benji, really quick, man. Did you watch the 30 for 30? I did not. I'm very familiar with the story, though, so I, I get the gist of it. I assume that was the 30 for 30 that was supposed to be, like, really, 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 really good, right? And then it just turned out that, yeah, Ric Flair just lives his character. I love it. Bill Burr did a joke about the 30 for 30, talking about how Flair tried to honor his marriage, you know, and try to do the family man thing, and he says he could only get 24 hours. And he says it so unapologetically too. He's like, I tried it. I tried I, it for seen, a day. <laughs> the only time I've seen him do stuff like that, um, I didn't see the third for third. He was on a spot. Uh, was it this where they trade spouses? Trading spouses. He was on that show with no uh, way with fucking Roddy Roddy Piper. No <laughs> way, dude. And yo, no. this dude, he was wilding out on that show, man. <laughs> That's such a silly show, too. Oh, that would be perfect for Flair. I got to watch. I'm going to watch that when we get Look off Look it here. up, dude. He was yeah. wild in that show, I, dude. Well, he that, was buying the that bar show out, man. perfect Yo. for that. For... <laughs> Roddy Piper was just like, is this like, he was like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Jesus. Holy moly, man. Um, but yeah, that's Flair, man. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That is Flair. Whether you love him or hate him. You know what? I hated him as a kid, but I've grown to appreciate him as an adult. And I just don't know what I appreciate. Maybe it's just the brutal honesty with him. Like, with Flair, it, it, what you see is what you get with that dude. Um, but my problem with Flair is he never evolved. Like, I mean, it was all cool. Don't get me wrong. Like, the character he lives is amazing. Don't get me wrong on that. But he was good 80s Hogan, Andre the Giant era, yeah. but he never evolved. But you, he never evolved with wrestling. Like Hogan, he took on the black and white and became Hollywood Hogan. Roddy Piper was cool, and then he escalated and became more of an asshole, and he, he escalated. Macho Man Randy Savage, he even escalated and evolved with wrestling, and he yeah, got he did those Slim Jim commercials, backwards man. beret and the red sleeveless and he released a rap and the album. sunglasses. I mean... Flair never evolved. That's my problem. Here's the difference, though. Pop culture accepted Flair in every generation of him. Even though he stayed the same, every, every, I mean, people are still doing rap songs asking Flair to come in their rap videos. So, I mean, even though his character never evolved, pop culture obviously accepts the guy still to this day. Um, so there's well, something. Pop culture is stuck in the past. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I can't no, really I disagree. Really as many do. reboots just, as we get. Know. But uh, I've never seen it. Well, we'll we'll include it on a show where we can debate topics. Um, the match ends with uh, McIntyre hitting the Claymore kick on Ricochet. We get a post match beatdown. Did McIntyre hit a Dirty Deeds? It looked like a Dirty Deeds, like 
I mean, I it was. Don't even know what a dirty deed is. It was a double underhook uh, DDT, but he did the whole like he, kick his been, leg back so, and swing he's into. He's been it. doing that move. Was, uh, that used to be his old finisher. They called the Future Shock from all my wrestling nerds out there. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so he wasn't I just adopting Dean Ambrose's or John Moxley's. No, not finisher. at all. Okay, okay. Um, I mean, you want to do a wrestling podcast? You gotta know these things, my guy. Listen, man. Listen now. Uh, he hits a. Uh, okay, <laughs> is there an official name for that reverse Alabama slam he does? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you you want me to? T- oh, shit. Sure. I'm asking <laughs> you. The, That's the McIntyre slam, man. The, the McIntyre. Are, are you pulling my leg, Benji? <laughs> <laughs> pulling something because I don't know what you're talking about. It's just the Alabama slam. I don't no, know. But man. he does it. He does it with um with Ricochet facing forward. The Alabama slam is traditionally done where um, the guy gets slammed onto an, his back. It's an inverted, inverted Scot- Scotland slam. All right, that's what it is here on out. You heard it first, folks. Uh yeah, he does the inverted Scotland slam onto the steel steps with Ricochet closing out the first match of the show. The um, ISS. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Cardale Jones get can it, be seen get, sitting. Get together, I, I just man. want to throw it out there real fast that the whole time I was trying to find a good plug to diss the Bailey to Belly suplex because it's stupid. And what McIntyre did wasn't stupid. I just want to throw that out there that the Bailey. Even Belly when Rob it. can't fit it into context, he still manages to get his hate for the Bailey to Belly across on every show. <laughs> I was waiting for a moment. It didn't happen. So I just want to throw it out there. It's a oh, dumb finisher. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, Cardale Jones can be sitting front row. Uh, he is the DC Defenders quarterback for the XFL. Um, yeah, they just quick XFL plug because you know it's run by Vince. Uh, okay, another quick plug was the fact that Ric Flair dissed the Cleveland Browns, and then later on in the show, they're like, "Hey, look, we got the Cleveland Browns' entire offensive line in the front row." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. They must have not been sitting there during that promo because you easily they would have panned the camera to them. That would have been great, right. actually. Yeah, that would have like, been dope as hell. They said that later on in the show. I'm like, wait a second. Flair dished y'all earlier. They're not even going to, like, like they can't, the can't. Maybe the cameraman just missed the spot. Because that'd be, like, amazing. Jesus. I don't know. The missed spot, I don't know. But, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, it could have been good, Ben. Go. You're right. It would have been awesome. Um, I got a question for you, Benji. Do you want the smoke? Do I want the smoke? Yo, yeah. I'm always ready for the smoke. Well, listen, they're in Cleveland, and getting that smoke is illegal, it's illegal. you moron. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dude, that line was awesome, man. I'm sorry. That that made me laugh so hard. AJ Styles. He's such a dad, bro. Like He is such a dad nowadays. Oh, man. Yeah, OC's backstage uh, running down Street Profits. Um Saying they don't deserve to be the host, and they and they all and and Luke uh, Gallows uh, finishes the promo with a simple "Cleveland sucks." Um, yeah, I don't know. It was good, man. I'm sorry, Benji. I used you for that segue. I apologize, bro. It was it was the punchline. It was good. Thank Keep you, moving guy. All right, all right. Um, so, Benji, out of and and Rob, both of you, uh, out of Andrade, Buddy Murphy, and Alistair Black. Out of this trio that we got a promo package for, who do you think has the most potential to shine going forward? It's a tough Dude, one. That's just a Black. loaded question. Just one person? Yeah, if you got to pick one, man. You got to pick one. Black. Black. I'm going Andrade, man. Andrade. Uh, you know what? Let's let's split the vote. I'll go Buddy Murphy. Why not? You um, don't believe that. <laughs> I, I actually here don't at the listen. Smack Raw podcast, we follow our heart, Kyle. That's listen, why I talk so much shit. For me, honestly, yeah, it is. It is kind of loaded because all three of them are insane. It, there's you can't really pick a loser here. But for me, it's a coin flip between Andrade and Aleister Black. They both just have a look and feel to them that uh, Buddy Murphy, unfortunately, for me, does not have. Uh, not yet, at least. Um. From there, we get an updated Raw roster photo. Alistair Black is now is backstage again. Um, but instead of uh, asking someone to pick a fight with him, I guess now it's he goes out and picks a fight. And tonight... Instead he, of, you know... Which he should have been doing from the beginning with. with. The fiend, he picks a fight with some local jobber. 
Listen Sam now, Jason out. Reynolds. I'm not gonna lie, looked he looked okay in there. He's a big boy. Uh, most of your local yeah. talent, man. Um, actually, Benji, Benji, you you have your ear to the track more with the indie wrestling. Did you recognize Jason Reynolds by any chance? Of course, bro. You don't know Jason Reynolds, yo. I do not. You gotta get outside the bubble. <laughs> oh my God, you're pulling my chain though, right? Maybe I don't want to get outside the bubble. Well, <laughs> we're always on that tip with Benji. Is he serious? I'm telling you, no, I really don't <laughs> know, man. Not? I'm an enigma. All right, an enigma. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh man, um, <laughs> Reynolds. Uh, <laughs> Reynolds gets in a little bit of offense, grabbing Black's hair, uh, clubbing the back of. Uh, of black down until he ultimately falls down. So he gets more offense than your typical local enhancement talent. But uh, Black Mass puts the end to any of that, puts him down for the three count. Black comes out with a good squash match. Not going to lie, man. RIP Jason Reynolds. Uh, you look good for while you were in there. Um, and then either of you catch this. I, I'm sorry. I was I was putting my kids to bed. AOP had their, um, their segment and... I wasn't in the room to read the uh, subtitles, it was, unfortunately. It was basic. Oh, they basically said that uh, Raw signed them. Yes. But Raw did not sign them to wrestle. Raw signed them because they didn't want SmackDown having them. And that was the gist. <laughs> oh. So what WWE does with all their local – or with all their indie talents. Yes, they signed them so nobody else can have them. That's what they said. And they said it plain as day this time rather than just trying to – Here's money. Go home and shut up. Well, I mean, other than that, that was it. they didn't go in the hallway this time and beat anybody. No, up. it's terrifying. What are you gonna do with these guys? Because you have Viking Raiders right now out there killing it. Who um who do wrestle later on in the evening, um and AOP. So you, you have got these show up that at, at a Viking Raider squash. Like have them have like the music hit and nobody mm. knows like what the music is and then these guys walk no. out. No Viking Just Raider boom, squash fast, AOP. Fast. No, Viking Raiders just in uh, like a squash match or not necessarily a squash match, but like a match that isn't really important. But the point of the match is to have AOP show up and then boom, feud starts. Oh, Viking Raiders squash somebody. AOP comes yes. out. Have them have like, like yeah, a monster badass. tag AOP's versus like, monster tag. Here's our music. You're not badass. Oh, man. Blah, 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 blah. Let's fight. I mean, that's better than the beat the clock like challenge, the which I would assume WWE would put them in. So. Because that would be my fear. They'd put them in a beat the clock challenge because they're both so dominant. Yeah, I mean, I guess it all goes well, down to it makes me, logical Bobby. sense to book to to have two dominant tag teams on the same brand. Yeah, I bet they could put on hell of matches too. Viking Raiders are seriously underrated, man. Those guys, whew, man, especially Ivar. Ivar is a freak of nature, man. Um, oh yeah, Ivar does it for you. He does, man. He does. And then That's the, what's up. the other week, y'all were comparing me to Eric. Well, the, okay, you look like Eric, man. I need you in a Viking outfit for this Halloween. This Halloween, I'll do it, man. I'll do it. I'll look up the face paint. I'll see what I can do. Face I'll paint, get... shirtless, and sweaty boy. Yo, the shirtless is gonna be a hard <laughs> one to pull off, man. Okay, that's. And I mean, it's just because of my waistline. It's literally hard for me to pull. Bro, the you off. gotta love yourself. Be confident with who you are, bro. <laughs> oh shoot! No, I'm a fat bastard. Um, well, <laughs> uh, someone else that needs a little bit of a confidence boost is Mr. Rusev out on King's Court, man. Uh, no, Rusev looking like he was gonna go paint a house. Dude, he looked like a like a <laughs> knockoff Orange Cassidy. Like he, he was look, just he was missing the jean jacket. Look like Freddie Mercury out here. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rusev, I love Rusev. I love Rusev. Oh man, I just I am terror. I love this story. I'm not gonna lie, man. I love this love triangle. I just have such little faith that it's gonna have the good payoff that I'm picturing it could have. And either way, here's here's the real question: How does Lana come out of this? Like, 
there is no like Rusev wins her back and then Lana is all of a sudden like absolved of what her if, sin. If, if we go back and look at her, her entire career, I know, the, man. Oh god, it's the same. She had the love triangle with Enzo. She had the love triangle with The Rock for a second. She had it with Z- uh, Ziggler. Ziggler. Like it's just every year it's the same. It was insinuated thing, you know? with Aiden English. With Aiden, e- like it just continues to be the same thing, bro. And I, I gotta be honest, I don't know that she comes out looking too, looking too good out here. You know what I'm saying? I think I just, I feel like this is the time that people like. It's like every other time people forgot about the previous time, but I think this time it's done. Like people are like, wait, she's been doing this for years. Like, yeah, because I mean, even if Rusev wins her back, they're gonna, they, they have to split up permanently. Like Rusev has to break them up and then ditch Lana, and maybe get back together a year later on screen, like give some time apart for like wounds to heal. But there's no like just winning her back and going forward, man. This marriage is seriously fractured and I feel for him. Like I feel for Rusev, bro. He said he's still wearing that ring. Oh man. He still believes in Lana. He took that, that, uh, that oath. My boy. I don't know, man. Can't relate. I don't know, man. That's that. That hurts, bro. I've never been through it, but that just hurts watching it. I Can't relate. Remember. I'd have dumped that hole in the big from the, from jump, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you on that one, Benji. I really do. Oh man, uh, Lashley appears on the Tron. It turns out we finally get an answer. Like it's finally definitive why Lashley and Lana are a thing. Lashley is willing to spend money on Lana. Apparently, more money than Rusev was, and so that earns or buys Lana's affection. So for for all my youngins out here listening to this SmackDown pod, this this is an important lesson to take out in life. All right. You want to get with the the fine hottie, you know, you want to get with her. You just got to spend, spend the door as, as we say in Spanish, la lana. (laughs) Oh man. Oh boy. Yeah, Lash is willing to spend money on Lana. Show her the finer things in life, like a fancy restaurant on WWE television. Um, the King asks Rusev. Which is, which is very unbelievable because you're a freaking WWE superstar. You don't have money. You know, Yo, you're wife, that I restaurant have looked like Applebee's equivalent. There was nothing really about did. that restaurant it really did. that seemed like it, it was really high did. dollar to me. It, <laughs> And then I don't know if it was later on, but that the waiter comes up and he's like, "The meal's on, the meal was on the house. What meal? It don't even look like they ate at that table. Get out of here!" Oh my god, dude. Yeah, they <laughs> they were definitely eating at a Ruby Tuesdays. Okay, like all we were just missing the salad bar out of shot. I'm telling you. Um, but yeah, King asks Rusev to respond. You know, to uh, seeing his wife yet again with Lashley, and he says he will respond, but in person because he knows where they are. Um, I would hope so, because Lana said that she'd been asking Rusev to take her there. So also when King was talking, he was getting a lot of the what chance, you know. And in this yeah. case, it this case it would be deservingly so. However, Rusev stepped in, being like, hey, y'all, he's this guy's a legend. Give him some respect, right? So as we've seen, these what chants have started to become a little bit problematic. All right, so I, both of y'all, is it time to retire that chant? I think yes. it's I think it's Ben time, man. But I just don't right. think you can until you replace it with something else that interrupts people's promos. I think it's just a permanent or, fixture. Like, or just don't interrupt people's promos. Yeah, mm-hmm. novel I, concept. I mean, what a noble concept. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in a perfect world. Yeah, we don't. But have tell that. us more about what happened next, man. What happened? People want to know. Yeah, I mean, like I said, Raw was surprising. Left and right, and just when I thought the surprises were going to stop, we get an exciting match uh, between Andrade versus the returning Sin Cara. And I don't mean to throw shade at our boy okay, Sin Cara. listen. Hold I on. got I got uh, some gripe with this, all right? So, we get a little vignette of what Sin Cara has been doing, you know, and he was a first responder during the El Paso shootings, right? He was out there. He was helping everybody, doing what he could, right? Did his part. And then the show afterwards, he, you know, came out. He brought the, the first responders, the paramedics out of the stage, right? It was son. a great moment for the community, right? Yeah. It was it was heartwarming. Like, it was a terrible tragedy what happened, you know? And, and he was out there doing his part, doing what he could, right? 
So we that's how we introduced Sinkara back in the ring. And the first fucking words out of Jerry the King's Lawler's mouth are, Oh, well, I, I guess I finally learned what Sinkara means. Oh, God, you're right. I just forgot. Yo, we just yeah. talking about the El Paso shootings and all that stuff. And that's the first thing you say? Yeah. Yo, he needs to shut the fuck up, man. I'm like, that was, yo, he was way out of line after that. Yeah. And you know what? I wasn't the only one that noticed because Vic Joseph, as soon as King said that, he was like, I don't know about that, King. We'll talk about that later. Like, he shut him the hell up right away because that was so out of borderline disrespectful, and out of line, man. Now, just King th- was, and then, and then I counted it, bro. This guy said, this, oh, oh, Sinkata means man without a face at least five, four, five he or did. six times throughout mm-hmm. this whole damn match. He thought <laughs> he that did. shit was hilarious. Yeah. Now, just a theory, but. I really feel like King is just serving as Cole and he is, is just Vince McMahon's mouthpiece. Like nothing, nothing to me strikes me up that King is the one who pre-writes all these phrases and jokes down. I, I really feel like, man, he's just out there just mic and ear regurgitating um, Vince McMahon or whoever in the back, which doesn't give him a pass, which doesn't give him a pass. You know what I mean? Because like you said, El, following El Paso, you know, shooting up with comments like that, human being side of you should kick in and just let that moment ride, and then kick the note in later, be cringy later, whatever, man. But just, yeah, yeah, just. And yeah. like I, I, you know, it was going throughout the match, and maybe it's just me picking it up. At, after a while, Dio Man and Vic Josephs were clearly just annoyed with this guy, man, because it, it was out of it was out of control. But was it enough to take away from this match? And a lot no. of y'all like to, um, oh, what did I see tweeted from our podcast? Oh, what year is this? That Cincadas and whatever, whatever. A lot of slander out there. That's cool. That's cool. That's fine. Whatever. But this was a fire match, and a lot of y'all out there just remembering the old Tinkata, the one that used to botch and shit all the time, whatever. That's not this guy. That's another guy. He's out in somewhere else, all right? And you know what? Andrade showed why, as you said earlier in the damn show, why he's got so much damn potential. Yeah. Man, like, they were out there doing it, yo. And then even, look, you even had Selena Vega out here. She 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 improved her. Normally, when they're on, on the apron, she'll do her running her at Karana. This girl in high heels did a damn handstand into a hurricane <laughs> and then flips and got yo <laughs> hey let's start taking i mean now we just spent the whole time talking about what um andrade and zelina vega did uh sincara held his own in this match it's not sincara also gets a bad rep because he's not given time to to breathe in matches to show what he can do he's typically brought out for squash matches you know right he gets just so a couple i, I got it I got to ask real fast. Did we find out what Sin Cara means tonight? This guy. Jesus Christ, Rob. <laughs> no, but like like Loki, he he did say he did repeat that stupid joke like throughout the damn match. The I Eagles going to be he funny did. like He brought yo. it over to Rey Mysterio. Like, Rey Mysterio I like it. dude. I didn't realize until you said it. Did yeah, you yeah, realize like, Rey Mysterio means mysterious king or whatever and, he and said? That's that's the point where I noticed that Dio Mata was annoyed cuz he responded with, "Oh, really king? Tell us what does it mean?" Oh yeah? When did you find that out? <laughs> like he was not having it anymore, man. No, man. It, it's that's the thing where it's like you know, let it's kind of now. Granted, Jr. gets similar flack, but nothing to this degree. But let these let these guys have their legacies. We're 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 well past their prime, man. Let's get these new commentators out there. They obviously know what they're doing, man. And, and you have to earn, earn like learn on well, the job. Honestly, Did, this goes, if you want to even go there, like you could have easily had Renee young there or Todd Phillips, but for some reason, y'all didn't want them on commentary. You need someone to be Vince's mouthpiece, man, is what it is. Like you need that confidant. You need that Michael Cole. Like who was, who was the, who was the veteran commentator back in the Attitude Era uh, showing JR and King how to commentate? You know what I mean? Like, no, you let them go out and do their thing. But right. nowadays, it's like you, you literally need an on-screen babysitter for these commentary booths. And it's, it's, it's so weird seeing such young commentators sitting next to such an older guy. With You asked that question, Kyle, and my mind went racing. I'm like, wait, what? There wasn't any – wait, what? What? What did I forget? Who else was there? 
<laughs> the answer was nobody. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Rob. Like, it's my time. <laughs> yeah. what the, what nobody. <laughs> that's exactly, that's my point. But you got King babysitting the raw commentary. And, you know, Michael Cole, who's not as bad, but Jesus, still bad, um, babysitting the SmackDown booth, you know, and, and holding back these these commentators, man. Um yeah, no, I, I'm completely with you, Benji. I'm not as fired up, but I'm completely with you on this. It is, it, it is, it is rough. Um, Sin Cara was able to, like I said, pull his own through this match, and these guys had a slam bang match. If you went on, if you went on Twitter and you siphoned through people's, most of the time they were backhanded. I even put out not really necessarily a back. I was trying to compliment the the match because I was on the edge of my seat cheering on Sin Cara and I was amazed because I never thought I would see the day it would be like that and it's true but I mean when you roll the opening package um, and then also let him have a good match with Andrade I mean obviously you can take a guy who is formerly known as a jobber in the roster and now you've elevated him to having a super entertaining match and probably have people talk about him and can't wait to see him next week you know and that's that's what I think we got out of this match. Unfortunately, it's not without controversy, though. Uh, but yeah, Andrade won with a hammerlock DDT. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean it, it, he did what he needed to do, man, and like he he looked good. Um, I'm curious to see where Andrade goes from this, man. Yeah. What what lies next for him? I think I th- he's got to get his hands on the um, United States title. Once, once it's off AJ Styles and on a face, I think it's got to go to Andrade. I don't think you hot shot him straight to the universal title scene, but he needs to be going after a belt at some point. A um, belt or at least a meaningful storyline, I think, would yeah. be great. Yeah, absolutely. Someone else who looks like he's going to have uh, meaningful storylines ahead of him, uh, Umberto Carrillo, who's backstage. Um I missed the part where apparently he threw shade at Rollins. I didn't pick up on this till later in the so evening. So he, he cut his promo saying, you know, the basic babyface promo, and he ended it with saying, you know, and if the day comes that I become a champion, I'm going to be a fighting champion, not a champion that likes to set things on fire. Oh, damn. He really did throw some shade. Okay. I missed Which, that. Which, at the beginning... Y'all in the little group chat were talking about his outfit, you know, and I was like, "What are y'all talking about?" And then somebody put it up next to Zordon, and yes, and he had the damn. I was like, "Yo, come on, man, come on now, <laughs> come on." I was gonna try and approach this respectfully, you and ask you. I was like, "Is this a throwback to something, or is this an original piece that just happens to make him look like a Power Ranger?" You know, I I, I enjoy the fact that you are, you know cautious about what you say now that this makes me feel very much better but um no the joke was funny it was it was pretty funny it was pretty spot on whoever photoshopped that that was pretty funny <laughs> thank you it wasn't me i i can't take credit i just retweeted of course it. i know that yeah no it wasn't me. yeah um <laughs> but yeah he does look like the white power ranger um, but yeah that's basically what his promo was that's what he cut august rollins and then what do we cut to next? Uh, Street Profits backstage, man. Responding to the OC's uh, presumed jealousy. Uh, calling out AJ Styles for his soccer mom hair and their 90s hand gestures and their mother lover comments. <laughs> but apparently mothers love SP more or Street Profits more, man. Oh, God. I was... Dude, these guys... Montez Ford is such a charismatic dude and angelo or angelo oh god angelo dawkins um just is like icing on the cake with him and he adds to just the already strong charisma that montez ford offers and these dudes i can't get enough of them bro like i cannot get enough of their damn promos um and and i mean it just it transcends, especially the closing shots of the show, which we'll get into, which that is going to be our thumbnail. The closing shot of the damn show. I can't wait to throw that up there. But um, God knows, man. These two guys are awesome. They're so good on the mic, and they're incredible in the ring, too. Um, but we're trying to figure out who the mystery partner is for the night. That is the big angle. That is the main event. A lot of speculation, man. Like it, I'm, I'm hyped to find out who it could be. Is it Flair? No. He's at the after party already. 
Is it Booker T? No. Uh, Dawkins is still waiting to be uh, donned as the Dark Knight. So we don't know, man. Um, but we do know that the mystery partner doesn't like AJ Styles. Has presumably had a former feud with AJ. Was it a feud in the Indies or was it a former feud in WWE? Either way, at that point, I was like, Cedric Alexander. That's who it is. Um <laughs> But uh, we'll find out later in the show what this huge angle really could be leading to. Um, we, uh, from there, we come to, uh, I guess, a name change. Uh, I think this is a name change. Because our truth we catch him creeping backstage and he bumps into the Bollywood boys, who I was under the impression their name had changed to the Sang Brothers. But um, they are referred to as the Bollywood Boys again. And uh, Truth gets rolled up and loses his 24-7 title. How do you feel about this one, Rob? I'm okay with it. <clears throat> I like Truth being on the chase. Yeah. I mean, I like him having the title, but I like him being the one to chase. Because funny things happen like what we get later on in the show. Oh, that I enjoyed very, very, very much. <laughs> yeah, like as long as you have truth involved in some way with the twenty four seven title, it, it's gonna be funny. Yeah, and I think um, I think the Sang Brothers or Bollywood Boys, whatever they're being referred to as, I actually I see potential in them in the twenty four seven. I bet they I they they were already really funny on um, two hundred five live, and I bet they can bring that that humor. Uh, into this scene so yeah I wasn't for it in the beginning but yeah the follow up segments uh, locked me in for sure I think the more different someone is from our truth the more like funniness you can get out of it yeah that's very true yeah cause yeah you got you had Drake Maverick Carmella now the Singh brothers it's none just, of them are like truth at all you know what I mean? It's just what, what would we call in the comedy business that dichotomy. You know what I'm saying? The dichotomy. It's word of the day, folks. Dichotomy. <laughs> All right. It's yeah. Segue from that, fucker. I uh, yeah. I'm. I was working on it. <laughs> so dichotomy means typically chemistry brought on by strong differences. Uh, unlike these two <laughs> teams. That we wow, had. you did it! Holy <laughs> shit! Yeah. What? <laughs> What the? <laughs> the new Raw Tag Team Champs, Viking Raiders, taking on the team of Zack Ryder, Kurt Hawkins, who are being interviewed backstage, by the way. They don't have the jobber entrance, which was a nice touch. Um, I'm not for really champs having the first entrance, but for this, it works for me. Um, interviewers like, you know, how you feeling about your upcoming match? They pretty much say that they're grateful. They run that into the ground. It's an opportunity. They're ready to prove they're not underdogs. And then they kick off like little fanboys like, I wonder if we're going to get pyro. <laughs> then the music hits and they go out. Um, unfortunately, no. I was kind of hoping for the Chris Jericho treatment and it'd just be some like sparklers and, and um, bottle rockets. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, I really was, man. I was hoping for that. But uh, no, nah, they didn't get none. And they didn't play into it either. They just had their generic... Um, they, 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 not generic. They were excited to be there. Um, one thing that I learned from this match is Eric is a mean bastard, and Ivar has one hell of a suicide dive that just makes me fear for his knees. I am, I am terrified that dude's knees are going to explode. One of he does go knee first, right? Uh, he goes head first, but he lands on his. his feet. Yeah, his knees hit first. Yeah, yeah. Whew, that's something you can only do when you're young, man. Um, but uh, no, man, these guys, uh, they're, they're a hell of a tag team. Um, and... Yo, I'm Zack Ryder all day, but they got their asses whooped in this match, man. <laughs> they got whooped. Yeah, thank you. I was just going to use the generic. They made quick work of them. But yeah, yeah, they got beat down pretty We're bad. excited to be here, bro. You're fighting the Viking Raiders, man. You ain't excited for nothing. <laughs> they're excited to be on TV is what it is. And they should be, man. And they're talented, too. Let's not, let's not run them into the ground. They're super talented guys and get over anywhere they go. It's just they just never get booked strong. But you know what? I had my doubts about Sin Cara. You know, and I proved that I can be proven wrong. Okay. You know, Ryder and Hawkins, maybe give them the right the right tag team. 
Who would that tag team have to be, though? Well, they did have a win against the Revival at WrestleMania, so who knows? Because I, they are building them up for the world's greatest tag team match ever at that show that shall not be named. Yo. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. Did you... um? Did you hear what the official name of that is? Like the name of that match? At all. Enlighten me. I have no idea. Hold on one second. Uh, create some banter for like 20 seconds. Well, yes. It's say so that long. on the podcast while we're recording. It's all good, man. It's all good. Jesus. I mean, we're being honest with our listeners. Thank y'all for listening. <laughs> we appreciate you here at the Smack Raw podcast. Definitely. And if you Again, want I want more... to remind you that. If our opinions differ, that's okay. That's allowed to be a thing. It's okay. It, really, it truly is. And if you want more of this comedic banter, follow us on Instagram for more of this comedical. <laughs> the, the name of the tag team match. Did we create enough banter? Yes, you did. Thank you. Got you. Okay, got you, fam. Good. We're the good. largest tag team turmoil match in history to determine World Cup winner and crown the best tag team in the world. Or as I wait, said, wait, on the, I missed. I missed the second part. <laughs> the largest tag team turmoil match in history to determine World Cup winner and crown the best tag team in the world. Oh, I think you missed a part because that didn't sound right. <laughs> or for short, the T L T T T M I H T D W C W A C T B T T I T W. Wait, W C W B T E. Yo, that's yo, all that's all I caught from that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yeah, man! I can't wait for that match that I'm not gonna watch. Um... <laughs> Shout out to Xavier Woods who tore his Achilles tendon today, it, man. It, so it was his Achilles. That sucks, yo. Yeah. yeah, that's a long recovery. Yeah, man. Now we're gonna have to hot shot Kofi's heel turn. Um, Kofi can't turn heel on Big E though, could he? Usually Xavier Woods would be the one you turn heel on. Sure he can. He can do whatever he wants to do. Yeah. It's totally real, and there's no script. He can just be like, you know, I don't like you no more. Yo. I'm just saying. He throws Big E's pancakes in the trash can. Oh, the heartbreak. Oh. Dude, the heartbreak right there. That would be. Oh, man. Just the thought of that breaks my heart. <laughs> it'd be, uh, it'd be, and that uh, was all about him losing in nine seconds. The festival no, of friendship all me. over again, man. God knows. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Cut back to um, the restaurant uh, with Lashley and Lana. They're being asked to leave by management due to the fear of Rusev showing up and starting a fight. Lashley claims that Rusev uh, isn't man enough to fight him. I think Lashley forgets that they're professional wrestlers. And Rusev once rolled into an event in a tank. I think Rusev will fight yes, anyone anyway. Valid. Yeah. Now, the manager told them the meal is on the house. But there was no nothing dirty on the table. There was no... I mean, when you have a meal, there's stuff on the table. It maybe. doesn't look like you just sat well, down. Just saying. Maybe they were, you know... Maybe they were busy, you know, eating something else. You know what I mean? Oh, my God. Let's not go there. Cut back. <laughs> Rusev shows up. Eating <laughs> a, a snack? A, a, a appetizer? Apps? Yo, what was Lana wearing? It looked like she was wearing a window. Mm. Like, it was, it was like a shirt... Everywhere that that a shirt needs to be, ex- uh, no, it's like it's like a shirt except for the this one is, spot that a shirt is. needed to be. Uncultured swine. Yeah. That was fashion over, man. That's fashion, all right. That's the hottest <laughs> trend over here in in Milan. You know what I mean? In Milan, what? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh my God! Rusev showed up and brawled with Lashley, and we learned that <laughs> Cleveland has the fastest police response time. There in was like five history. cops. To the... Dude, hey, yo, yo, that was a lot of cops right away. Man, I think they were, you know, I, yo, I, I'm not gonna say it, but I mean, they were they were clearly there <laughs> hovering around over Lashley for a minute. Yo, I'm just saying. I, I want to know where cops get their uniforms because it definitely looked like they got that junk from Party City, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like those are some those are some like. <laughs> In blue t-shirts. Oh, Yo, that's boy. the fastest I've seen the police arrive anywhere. I'm telling you, man. I live in the suburbs and the cops won't get over here that fast. Oh, my God. But, Rusev, you know, they, they broke it up. You have Lana just screaming in the background. And, it, you know, it's, I don't know what they're going for with this angle. I, I guess they were going for a little bit of 
you know, guerrilla shooting, a little bit of shock value, you know what I mean? But, you know, it's just the cinematography was just not working for me is all I'm oh. saying. Didn't you say you want like the Brian Pillman treatment on this? Yo, if they're going, <laughs> if you're going to go with this cuck angle, just cuck it all out, man. Like have have Rusev just show up at Lashy's house. Them start fighting and then one of them just pulls a gun on the other one. Let's just redo Austin and Pillman. Yeah, except you'd have Rusev probably with the gun. Like you'd have to. Like it's like I've had enough. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I'm actually getting kind of nervous about this now. Yeah, because you could take it. Like it could get dark. It could get real dark. Instead of like cringe comedy, it could just get seriously dark. No, like if oh. it keeps going like this, we're gonna have a camera follow Rusev. He's gonna break into Lashy's house and strangle him in his sleep. Yeah, man. Or, or like Rusev, like you know, like hey, Lana, I got the test results back and I tested positive. I'm not gonna tell you for what, but Lashley, you need to get tested now. That's dark, yo. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Instead and of going straight the violence, storyline as is was cringe. Yo, instead of going, you straight... went like <laughs> what? <laughs> you made him Freddie Mercury for real. Oh, I didn't go. Hey, look, man, I I left it up for interpretation, okay? So, speaking of segues, what did we have next? <laughs> oh, Transition, man. Kyle. Run your show, damn it. Jeez Louise. Get control of it. Someone else who recently vis- uh, visited the doctors, Ray Mysterio comes out wearing a sling. Um, he's been training with Cain Velasquez recently. But tonight, he's here to tell the crowd, thank you. And he's here to tell the crowd that they're all family. And he's also here the crowd, here to tell the crowd to watch a program no one wants to watch, unfortunately. I hate to, I hate to be a bummer about it, but I was really feeling genuine about Ray. His promos are super strong as of late. The dude's got me to the brink of tears when he starts bringing up retirement and in his love for Dominic and stuff. But when he came out and he was kind of kissing the crowd's butt a little bit and then and just topped it off with and at crown jewel Cain Velasquez is going to give you another scar I was like ah that's all this was that's all you this was I mean he had to do it that way otherwise if he just if you just bring Cain Velasquez he's going to get booed yeah like, no stop I know now if you got Ray you're not going to boo Ray yeah, yeah, I mean, and Ray, and and hey, to fair play, Ray, Ray is awesome on the mic. He's he, he's been cutting some of the best promos he's ever cut. Yeah, ever. um, uh, we get a Paul Heyman. Yeah, Paul Heyman comes out, but actually, Ray starts to starts to talk in Spanish at one point. I was going to ask you, Benji, like he didn't he didn't do the whole. So sp- what he, what he said was, you know, we're all family, we're all together, and. We're going to take that asshole and we're going to... Oh. Basically, we're going to fuck his shit up. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. That's what I... Okay. All right. Thank you. I just... But, know. you know, it... You could do that. You could say that shit because no one's going to know what he's saying. They, they're, not, they're not bringing up subtitles for Ray. They do it for right. AOP, but... Um, That's basically what he said. Okay. Yeah. Paul Heyman comes out. He does his normal shtick on the Tron. Brock can't be there because he was drafted to SmackDown, but... Heyman can go where he wants. I mean, he does technically run Raw, so he has to be there anyways. Um, but what I really liked about this was just when Heyman started to trail off to that whole, like, you start tuning him out because you've heard it before, Ray cuts Heyman off. And I really liked that, man. And and Heyman delivered it, delivered, like, the whole, like, uh, shock very, very nicely. And then, to my surprise... Out comes Shelton Benjamin, and Benjamin is spitting some truth, man. And I love this. Benjamin's coming out. He says, all I got to do is beat up Rey Mysterio, and I get a title shot. He's like, because that's all Kane had to do. Or, or, um, Lesnar? Lesnar had to do, and Kane just came to his defense. You know, uh, He gets in the ring. He starts pushing Rey around. He's like, oh, so this must be for an intercontinental title. And he pushes him again. He's like, well, that's worth a U.S. title shot. I thought it was awesome. Before that, though, the re- he, did, he did justify why he was out there. He's former training partners in, in, uh, with Brock Lesnar back up in, I think you said, the University of Minnesota. So Shelton Benjamin and Lesnar go way back. Um, they were roommates. Shelton Benjamin, they were roommates. Shelton yeah. Benjamin is basically the guy who got Lesnar into wrestling. Yeah. In the first, 
He got him into pro wrestling. They used to do the amateur wrestling. He got him into wrestling. He actually got him inside the, into WWE. He put his word out. Put him. They brought him in all because of Shelton. So those guys are homies. They go way, way back. Yeah, and um, this is the most fired up I've been for Benjamin, even as a heel. Because I, I went off. Uh, I don't know if you watched last week's show, but I, I went off. At one part, I was super bummed and annoyed. Like they're wasting Benjamin, who's got oh yeah, definitely, so much especially potential. later. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this this got me hyped because this is at complete contrary to what I was going off about last week with Vince, and um, but uh, you can only push race so many times before it's kind of like if you've ever played Zelda. And you, you beat up the chickens for too long, and like more chickens fly in, and then they just waste <laughs> you. Yeah. Wow, what an analogy. If you, if you push Ray around too much, man, Kane Velasquez is, go, is going yeah, to yeah. show up, and he is going to mess your stuff up, dude. Oh, my God. Yeah, he um he he went in there and then whooped Shelton Benjamin, got him on the ground to pound, and then put him in a rear naked choke, and then Shelton Benjamin ran out. And that was pretty much it but i gotta say yo those punches this shit, those punches were whack first of yo, all those punches <laughs> those punches are whack they clearly he hasn't because he was doing more lucha training not really much strikes so yeah. like it, it showed right and honestly the way this it was going so great but the way this shit ended but honestly and i hate to say it the way it shit ended with shelton benjamin is pushing Rey mysterio and then quitting Rey mysterio looked like a little bitch and then shelton looked weak as hell just running out, like just being being choked out, not defending. Like they both look bad at the end of this, in my opinion. Yeah, it, like nobody it, looked good at, at the, for, to end this segment. Yeah, just just as quickly as I got hyped for Shelton at the end of the segment, I was like, oh, that's about it. Yeah, like they, next, they all look bad. Yeah, next week Shelton's gonna be probably lost in the shuffle again, or he'll just be Brock's proxy from here on out. But we'll see. What about you? Um, what about you? Uh. Rob Rude, Rob, Rob's Rob, on the what show. What you got to say? Yeah. Rob's on the show. Who's Rob? I know, right? <laughs> For a second. I, like, yes. who, I enjoyed Rob? this. I enjoyed him spitting what I haven't really said because you guys know I like to keep it kayfabe. Um, yeah. yeah. So all of a sudden, this guy comes out of nowhere, gets a title shot. I didn't know who the hell the guy was. And I'm that's all fair. about Brock Lesnar. That's, that's fair. But, like, I'm glad that Cedric's like. This, you got to get your boys to you know, fight your battles and whatever. I, I enjoyed it all. I enjoyed Ouch. it. I really did. I'm all about who? Um, Sheldon Benjamin. There you go. All right, cool. I'm all about him now. I, I, I was about to say Cedric Alexander. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but you're you're but, right. Like he what he said was true. Like Sheldon Benjamin told no lies. You know that's what happened. Mm-hmm. And, you and, know, but like it was just such a good build up, and just I don't know the way it ended. It's just I don't know. To me, they just looked weak. Yeah, uh, it 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 could have just it could have benefited from just like a big spot, like um, just anything, like a type of finishing move or something. Um, but yeah, or or at least a, or a pull apart. You could have had rescue. Like this isn't a sanctioned match. Get out of here, Kane. You know what I mean. Get out of here, Shelton. Uh, yeah, but you know, if if they would have had that restaurant's you know security, they would have been there. All the Cleveland's police force is over at Ruby Tuesdays, man. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Oh Damn. my god! Yeah, they were all over there. So that leaves us. That leaves me to ask: Where do you go from the show from here? What follows this? What could follow this? Well, I mean, moment? obviously, we don't like what's going on in the ring. In the ring, so we go backstage. That's how backstage, you do this. Right. Okay. Uh, Seth Rollins is backstage, and he's being questioned, and he's you know they're asking him you know has the fiend gotten in his head? Um, at this point, I think it. I don't know what got in Seth's head more, the Fiend or the CM Punk chants that started raining out through the arena. Yeah, those um, were loud. That was worse. You know it's loud if the back if the backstage interviews are picking him up clear as day. Um, like people are just not messing with Seth Rollins, man. No, it's good. And you know what? I I actually have faith that this heel turn's coming at a very needed time. Oh, you have to cuz if you keep him as a face, yo, it's it's, it's going to collapse. Yeah, we you know we thought about that with Roman too, um, but uh, yeah, Seth admits he's like if you face the fiend, you change. You know, in harking back to their incredible five star Hell in the Cell match, um, 
but he Best catches ever. <laughs> yeah, uh, he catches something in uh, off frame, catches his eye, and for the first time, the WWE audience are treated that there is stuff that takes place off frame, like the universe doesn't just bubble in because the camera follows him, and there's actually someone else there. Who is it? It's Umberto Carrillo out there who was accusing Seth of being an arsonist, or maybe not directly <laughs> being an arsonist. <laughs> But um, uh, Seth Seth Rollins says, you know, you want to back those words up. Let's have a match. Let's not only have a match. Let's have a match right now. And, dude, if Humberto Carrillo did not look like a little kid who just met Santa Claus, I swear to God, dude, his eyes <laughs> he, he lit. Yeah. Dude, his he, eyes lit up like, oh, it's the big time. You can see it in him, man. Um, ah, man, that's. That was uh, I was I was giddy for him. Uh, I, well, dude, like you know, you 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 wrestle your career right. You get here, which is you know the supposed big shot, big time, right? And now you're being cha- you're gonna have a match against the the top champion, yo. Like debut, your debut, and your, and your debut match is against the universal champ. Could you imagine being him backstage? I know Rob, you don't like to talk about this stuff. But could you imagine him, like, not only does he get called up, he comes into Raw, like, what do you guys got for me? And they're like, oh, yeah, tonight, your debut, you face the Universal Champion. You know you feel like a big deal, like, oh, they have faith in me, or they see something in me. That's got to be such a tickling feeling, because how many people, I mean, look at it like this, Aleister Black, Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa, and and who else debuted via freaking PowerPoint presentation? Which, slide by the way, show. is the worst way to debut someone is through a damn slideshow. I'm just saying. That's what I'm saying. You know, so he easily could have been part of a slideshow, but they they put him in there with the top champ at the time. So that's that's got to feel good, man. Yeah, so he was giddy. He was good. He was happy. That's that. That's what you want out of a bit of a baby face, right? Right. Exactly. Which you know. Um, you could argue Seth was until you get about halfway in this match, and then we see something is stirring in Seth. Uh, the match uh, does come up right away after this segment. You got Seth Rollins taking on Humberto Carrillo. Uh, Carrillo, when the match starts, goes straight after Seth. Roll up, arm drags. He's taking it to him. Uh, Seth, all of a sudden, starts showing this mean streak, would you say? Something we don't really see from him. He's not doing his normal wrestling shtick. He's doing some neck cranks. He's looking. He's got some grit on his face, man. Um, so, do you guys think that within Kefe, within storyline, you think the match against the Fiend or his whole beef with him is starting to affect him? I think that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, man. I think that's exactly what's going on. I think Seth is. Uh, he. Uh, it's. It's kind of like what Bray Wyatt was trying to get out of John Cena in that WrestleMania match. Where you know he just want he didn't he it wasn't even about like pinning John Cena and, and and beating him, it was getting John Cena to come over to the dark side. And I think I think Bray Wyatt has infected Seth, man. I think he's infected. He doesn't know it yet, and before he knows it, it'll be too late, and we're gonna have like a vicious Seth Rollins, man. He'll just snap. Um, during the match, uh, we are we get chance rain down on us. Uh, we want Wyatt. Um, which I think was suiting. Like some people thought that was like disrespectful because it's the kids' debut match, but I I mean it was fitting for the story, so I didn't really have an issue with that chant. If it was CM Punk, I would have been pissed. But we want why I thought it made sense. No, I mean you're not you're not wrong. I mean clearly Bray Wyatt is one of the hottest things in WWE right now. I and mean, obviously, if you pay tickets to a WWE show, which they're not cheap, you know. Um, you want to see something like that, you know. Uh, having said that, I, I, I this is probably a, a, as good as a debut you could possibly have for Umberto Carrillo. Like, he hit that moonsault, he hit man, he got so much airtime on that. Like, it, it was just like perfect. And it like, oh, reminds ahead. me of a Kurt Angle moonsault. Kurt Angle had a really underrated, pretty moonsault as well. Although Carrillo looks way more natural on the ropes than Angle ever did. Yeah, no, that's that's a valid point. Um, Rob, what was your take? This is your first impression. Me and me and Benji got a little bit of history with this kid, but this was your first taste of the White Power Ranger. Uh, what was what was your take on this guy? I think he's got potential. 
I honestly thought that he was going to somehow pull off a win here. Like, I thought they were giving him okay. a push off rip. I mean, but it was, I mean, obviously it's Seth Rollins, and, you know, it's right. yeah, obviously yeah, yeah. Seth won. But I liked him. I like seeing him. I, I think he's got potential. I think he's definitely going to be something. The only thing I think that this match was missing was put the title on the line. If you're going to do it, if you're going to make him go in big, be like, oh, you want a shot at the title? Okay, yeah, here you right. go. It, it's, it's Christmas morning. I'm feeling good. Here, you get a shot at the title. That was really... I think it would have... Rob, you could cut pro. I think it would have escalated that was, a that little was more. solid, man. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty good. That, you, you put that title on the line it's and it's it Christmas morning, kid. <laughs> Come get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Like, if you even go back... Uh, Go to like a Carlito debut in against John Cena. You put the title on the line. All of a sudden, the match is like it's important. Like there's there's stakes involved. You know, Rob brings up a good point. That would have that would have just put more pressure on, on the match. Put more something like you're fighting actually for something. And then it would have even it would have even highlighted more of Seth Rollins like mean streak. Like he's fighting this guy who he should have you know be handling easily. Now he's struggling, and the more he struggles, the more that the fiends like darkness comes out of him you know mm-hmm. and, and with the title online i feel like that would have been a good highlight rob yeah cheers yeah, yeah, to yeah. you man you brought up a good point not to mention ever <laughs> since um page debuted and beat uh aj lee for the mm-hmm. divas title on her debut ever since then now people believe it can happen you know and that's what that's what you want you want you want a match where you don't know who's gonna win you know like you don't want it where it's like okay this guy's clearly the main guy it's not gonna lose even even with this one like like yeah. uh rob said like there was moments where he thought oh shit he actually might win like you want that in a match you know especially towards your main event you know that's something you definitely want yeah um but like 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 benji said Carrillo hit a gorgeous moonsault Unfortunately, it wasn't enough to put Seth away, so he went to the well again. Very amateur mistake. If we all know one thing, you don't go for your finisher multiple times in a row unless you're John Cena or Seth Rollins. Which, to be fair, he never hit his finisher. He never even attempted it. That's true. Yeah, the moonsault's not his finisher. But um, isn't his, his finisher, is it a Phoenix Splash? It's a... I don't even know how to describe it. Or is so it he'll like get a Phoenix top, 450? So he'll get on the top corner... Right. Yeah. He'll bounce like like a legs extended, bounce on the top rope, um, and then bounce into a splash. It's it's very unique. It's hard to explain. Very lucha, it, like lucha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like but um, no, he never hit it. But you're right. You should never want to go for the same move twice. And unfortunately, <laughs> rookie mistake. He went. He hit went on that against Rollins, and Rollins, being the consummate veteran, saw that coming. You know, and he puts his legs up and that was pretty much the beginning of the end for the for Carrillo in this match yeah he he got he got stomped in the face uh with an up kick he gets a uh, boot to the Which, gut by the way as Rob likes to say quick plug pretty refreshing to see one curb stomp end the match just saying yeah that's a very good point <laughs> he sold it too he, he sold, sold the it. hell out of that man yeah man <laughs> Such a good kid, man. Uh, I, bet that, I bet that kid was just on... I bet he's still on cloud nine right now, man. Um, but yeah, he ate that stomp. Rollins Rollins gets the victory uh, as Rollins exits the ring. Um, he Something comes across him. And you know, when for a moment you wonder, is this, is this the heel turn? What's going on with Seth? He goes back into the ring. By this point, Carrillo's made it back to his feet. Rollin offers his handshake with respect, uh, almost as a uh, as a sign of you're going to be big someday. Uh, this this heartened back for me when Undertaker had that legendary match on Raw with Jeff Hardy for the belt. Jeff Hardy couldn't win in that ladder match. Undertaker gave him a couple more choke slams, but then eventually Jeff Hardy would keep getting to his feet. Undertaker patted him on the back raised his hand up Jeff Hardy went on to accomplish incredible things with his career going forward that's kind of what it struck me as I got a lot of flack because I I actually I created that picture I took I took the two images I put it on Twitter first reaction I got was Duke calling me out like I'm disrespecting Taker Seth Rollins sucks I was like dude it's just 
it's the message that's trying to be conveyed, man. I'm not trying to insult nobody. That's just how I interpret wow, it. Wow, bro. You you over here disrespecting Taker, bro? Apparently, man. Apparently. Just a sign of respect. You can't compare Undertaker showing someone else respect with any other wrestler showing respect. Otherwise, uh, Twitter ain't having it, man. Um, <laughs> I should have known, though. I should have known. It's my fault. My fault for thinking stuff was nice. Trying to be like Rob and be optimistic online. You know. <laughs> it just um, Someone else who's trying to be optimistic is uh, R-Truth in his hunt to get back his 24-7 title. He sees... Uh, I actually... Okay, so before I come across really bad, which Singh brother was it that got the belt? <laughs> like... I'm just going to let you figure that one out. Okay, good. It wasn't only me then. All right. So going forward. No, I know, but I want you to. Is it Sumil? To bask in your ignorance is all I'm saying. Is it Sumil Singh? So it for any for all my listen for all the listeners out there, I want y'all to go, hit in the comments and let them know which Singh brother was the one that won the 24-7 title. Either. Benji don't I, know. <laughs> I clearly know, buddy. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Truth sneaks up on um, one of the Singh brothers looking like he's reciting lines for one of his Bollywood movies, rolls him out. Our truth calls out his own count. He gets up to like six, looks at the ref. He's like, ref, why aren't you counting? The ref's like, you rolled. Uh, he's not the champ. And then um, the current champ, Singh brother, comes out. They do they do like the Zoidberg like crab walk like off off frame man and i lost my stuff dude that was the funniest thing dude and i i all, all of a sudden i have all faith in the Sang brothers now holding those belts they're gonna be pulling some bella twin magic um to maintain that 24 7 title it's gonna be funny watching truth try to like chase them around seeing double vision oh uh, i could i can see it already it's gonna be it's gonna be good it's, it's good things coming man good things are coming um Potentially good things coming is uh, the Street Profits mystery partner because uh, that's our main event of the night. Street Profits taking on OC. At this point, I'm realizing for the first time it's not a three versus three tag match. I thought Which, it was, they sure did make it seem that way. They really did. I, I thought it was going to be a, the same thing, a six man tag. Yeah. So Street Profits come out first by themselves. Which also, you know, shout out to Street Profits. Debuting a Monday Night Raw in the main event. True, man. A lot of a lot of good like debut or refresh matches tonight. Really was. Um, you had what two debuts, right? And then, but you also had Alistair Black come out, and you also had Andrade. We unfortunately didn't get Buddy Murphy, but we did get a lot of a lot of guys either getting a refresh or, or straight up a debut and a respect respectful debut as well so yeah shout out to street profits killing it man you gotta think they're starting to wise up to the fact that you cannot build a show just on one or two people like you've got to start building up everybody else not if there's not not everybody's going to be in the main event but you gotta give people start having some kind of value that's right man truer words could not be spoken um street profits come out first uh through the crowd partying like normal um OC follows them, so we're left to think that the mystery partner would now debut, but no. So they kind of make fun of Street Profits. Who are they going to be? Mystery man, you know, invisible man, whatever. No one shows up, and it ends up being Street Profits taking on Gallows and Anderson with uh, AJ Styles so being I have a threat a on the outside. I have a question. If it was going to be a mystery partner, partner implying with, with them, so it was going to be a six-man, right? Right. So... So, if we didn't get the mixed street partner, should it not have been a three on two handicap match? Yeah, yes, th- it should have. I right. This was them setting up the angle last week before they knew how to play it out. And and I in in truth, and it because it it's because it comes down to who it was. It, and I really think that they wanted it to carry an impact, and I bet they thought if you rolled all three of them out there together, it wasn't going to have as big of an impact. So. Um, that's fine. I would have been down with the three on two. Yeah, it makes, yeah. It, it makes it more hype. Like you got mm-hmm. okay. AJ Styles is on the outside of the ring. He ain't doing nothing. There's no handicap going on. They don't need no help. But you have a three on two. Street profits start getting their ass whooped because they're down a man. Then you know 
the staleness we got that came out is a little more hype. That's it's true. Yeah. It's true. It's, yeah, man. Absolutely. No, you're very right. I mean, right, they ruined bro. it. They, they absolutely ruined it by having AJ Styles not be in the match. Yeah. It, had it been a debut of a wrestler that was not announced for the draft, free agent, hell, maybe not part of the WWE roster. We were speculating Johnny Mundo, Johnny Wrestling, Johnny Morrison, you know, that would have that would have carried through very well because that's straight out of left field. Um, but that wasn't well, the I'm case. just the way they hyped it up was going to be like, okay, it's going to be a debut of like somebody big. It's not going to be no no free agent, maybe someone from NXT roster. or something. Just the yeah. way they hyped it up, you know, and somebody so, that has something to do with the Street Profits, right? That's yeah. what I was thinking. Like, I mean, after tonight, you're not going to see the, you're not going to see them at all together at all for any reason no. whatsoever. No, exactly. yeah, Nothing. absolutely whatsoever. Not. Nothing. So you're going to forget tonight happened. Yeah. So it kind of makes it like it was a great debut for them, but that kind of makes the whole thing like kind of pointless. I think. Do you think? Okay, so let's let's just cut to it. Uh, we'll cut to it. Uh, Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins. They start out strong, but the numbers start to add up against them because AJ Styles is making his presence known on the outside. Just as the ref catches on to AJ, he goes to throw him out. Mystery partner confidant whatever debuts it's kevin owens who yes has a history with aj styles has previous feuds but there's no chemistry the word are they dichotomy is not a good one um you could have you you what you just said he has a history with aj styles you could have pulled this angle off street profits are fighting the oc Without yeah, cool. Yes, yeah, you don't hype nothing up. Profits. You don't hype no mystery partner. And then street profits are fighting the OC. And then AJ Styles interferes, and he interferes one too many times. And Kevin Owens' music hits, and he comes and he whoops AJ Styles' ass, so, and then he leaves. Boom! No disappointment. Yeah. So this was creative, obviously falling on their face, not because of who it was, but because of the hype they tried to build. The way it was it. used. Yeah, exactly. You built too much hype. You you set the bar up, and you and you failed in execution. There was just yeah, I mean, Rob. You're absolutely honestly, you're absolutely right, Ben. You, you I was I was honestly trying to come up with a clever tweet saying this is how you pull a mystery man off and bring up Hogan at Bash in the Beach to oh fucking make NWO get born. <laughs> That's how you end a hyped mystery man. Not this. Not this. The no. third man. The third man. Oh man. Um. But yeah, it it was it, it fell flat. But I mean, going forward, we're probably fine. It's it, this is more of an isolation, like an isolated failure, not failure going forward. I'm totally down for Kevin Owens, AJ Styles again. These guys it was are entertaining. Yeah, that's what we could say. It was mishandled. Granted, a face face Kevin Owens against heel AJ isn't. It's not the greatest thing, but it ain't that bad. It ain't that bad, man. I'm okay. I'm okay with it. Just tonight, you know, looking forward to the big debut mystery partner. Who's it going to be? Edge of my seat. Hell, this could have been like show opener or like intro to third hour or something. Just put it somewhere else on the card to to mm-hmm. take away from it. But yeah, making it main event, your close, your go home angle or closing the show angle. Yeah, it was just... That was it was a bit much. It fell flat, but you know what? It shouldn't take away from the overall show because this has been this was honestly the best Monday Night Raw that I have seen in a long time. I cannot recall the last Monday Night Raw that didn't piggyback off previous legends too hard. Granted, you had Flair open the show, um, but yeah, utilize new talent, great debuts. I mean, overall, the the show was a great show. Just had a flat ending is really what it was. But to me, the ending was made up. I don't know if y'all caught the closing angle. Someone gave Montez Ford their baby. And Montez Ford oh, started yeah. partying with a baby. And that's how they closed the show, dude. They go out to the crowd and this woman's like, Montez Ford, here's my three-month-old baby. Take him. <laughs> just, just gave him okay. her baby, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Who does that? Who just like take my baby? It just no. Oh, okay, I'm laughing too hard at that one. I'm sorry, but 
I looked up, man. I looked up. Because <laughs> I looked down at my phone because of the flat reveal. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is over. And then I look up as the show's going off the air. And it's Montez Ford with a baby. Like, it threw me for a loop, man. I'm sorry, bro. But that was hilarious. Oh, my God. Yeah. But, um... That was, that's that's my take, man. Uh, Rob, besides the flat ending, man, what's your take on the show? I lost you. You Hello? lost me. Hello. Hello. Did Hello? you both? Did we you, lost you. You're did, back. Did you both no, lose me? No, you you were gone. Yeah. Really? Okay. All right. Cool. So I wasn't just laughing to myself. No, I said. Uh, I said the show was. Maybe saved. you didn't invest in a new laptop or something. Oh God, dude, don't. <laughs> um. No, I started laughing because of the flat the flat ending I said was made up for with Montez Ford jamming out with a baby. He jammed out with a baby? I didn't even see that. No? Dude, are you kidding me right now? You did it. The closing shot was them going back through the crowd because they won. They beat they beat the OC. They they gave uh uh Anderson a flatliner into the frog splash, pinned him for the win. And then they went and partied in the crowd. As they were partying through the crowd, a woman handed Montez Ford her like couldn't have been but like two month old baby. And he's and he picks up the he's holding the baby like not like gave the baby kiss like literally holding the baby like partying like jamming out and dancing with the baby. Oh, that I saw that, dude. That was like the funniest damn thing. I'm sorry, man, but that that had me losing my stuff. I was I was beside myself when I saw that. I forgave him for the flat Kevin Owens reveal. Yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at the gif right now. Rob, did you end up seeing it by any chance? I didn't see it. I seen it on Twitter, but I didn't see it live. Oh, okay. So you did see the gif of yeah, Montez yes. Ford just jamming out with this yes. with a baby. I don't know, man. All right, I've I've literally said baby like 62 times in the last 3 minutes. Somebody just said baby. <laughs> Oh, hangover man. plugged. It ain't over plugged. But um, what was your overall take on the show, Rob? That's, hangover that's... plugged. <laughs> Jesus. That's what I asked you, I guess, while I was cut off. So Rob's overall take on the show. Let him know, Rob. Weak. Well, okay. No, weak is weak is a hype. I, everybody's saying it was hype. I don't see that it was hype. It wasn't bad, but I've seen much better. And then the fact that I got blue balls at the end was just capped it off. So you, uh, damn, man, like you had Sin Cara in a good match. You had the debut of Carrillo, Street Profits. I, I mean, mean the, if that's how he feels, that's how he feels. It wasn't like a knockout show for him, you know? Yeah. That's cool. Like, I, I enjoyed it. It was all right, you know? Um, it it was good. It just wasn't, I don't know. Yeah, it was I just, just like how everybody's was saying, I, like it was super it? good. Like I don't, I don't think it was. Like no, Kyle no. said, it was one of the best Raws in recent history. I, I don't, I disagree. Uh, I don't know about that. That's. I don't. I, I thought, can. I mean, not maybe. I thought you, I thought again, you said, like I said, it I wasn't you said bad. Smoke it wasn't was bad at all. In Cleveland. <laughs> 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 I say I'm not in Cleveland, but it's illegal here too. So. It's uh, not here. Just saying. Yeah. Nah, man. Like it was, it was an alright show, man. We had a lot of good stuff happen. You know, it was good. It's it's definitely a, a better a step in the right direction, if anything. But you know, just to say like this was a, a most amazing thing, no, not really. But it's definitely, it's definitely a. You see that there's 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 a new direction. There's a new it, what if anything you see that there's clearly somewhat of a coherent vision. For, for where they're going moving forward. And that's something we haven't seen in, in a minute. It just seems like a hodgepodge of ideas. Let's see what, what throws at the wall and we'll see whatever sticks. It seems now that there's more more organization, more more ideas put in together and a more cohesive overall telev televised program just being delivered to us. If anything, having said that, I, I, li I would like to see the next Raw pick up from where this one, off, this one left off and be even better. Just carry it forward. I, yeah, yeah. I, the show left me optimistic, and I think that's why I enjoy it so much. Rarely do I come away from a raw going, I can't wait to see next week. But I actually, I am excited for next week, um, which is good. I think that's at the end of the day, that's that's probably what you want out of a 
out of a raw, you know, to get you excited for the next one, not leave you too disappointed and everything. Because it, honestly, it, it could have been a whole lot worse. We've seen a whole lot worse. So it's, it's and it, that's sad that that's the bar is set so low, but that's what they've done to themselves, you know. So to for, to see that they're actually starting to move, get some kind of momentum, that that's I think that's good. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, that's it. I think that's our show, folks. Uh, tune in Wednesday night or, well, really Thursday uh, when we'll be both covering NXT and AEW. Benji, you going to be on the uh, NXT show this week? Uh, to be determined, TBD, man. We'll see what's going on here. What about you, Rob? Uh, I, I hear you might be, you know, doing having a little bit of making some moves. You know? Oh, I was, I was. It, it fell through. Um, I'm, well, I'm having to pass, but I have something in the works. I'm okay. just not ready to say yet. Okay, uh, <laughs> so tune in, TBD, man, to TBD. be determined. That's good, man. So I, I will be on, on the NXT show, you know, and you know. NXT, AEW, a lot of controversy. People want to say one's better than the other, man. That's up to the audience to tell. But one thing that you can always be guaranteed to get is the best of both shows on the SmackDown. That would have been an awesome intro or outro had you not cut off. Thank you, folks, for joining Son us. Of a- <laughs> <laughs> Bye.